चुके हैं Hi, this is Tekfa, and uh, we are continuing with Belladonna today in the Materia Medica Pura. We are part way through the proving data. Sanjay has his screen share for us. Yeah, yeah. One minute. By the time you can give introduction. Can you see it? Yep, I can see it. Okay. We will begin from, uh, I think, 200. Or is it 201? Oh, we might as well go with an even number. Cough on account of want of breath at night. That means that there's difficult respiration, a suffocated kind of feeling. Sir, in the YouTube is a uh, one twenty. Sometimes at the top of the trachea, there's adhered mucus, which is with difficulty detached by short cough. Also, mucus lower down in the lung, which is expectorated. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. We missed something. Oh, you're in the wrong medicine. Mm. Sorry. So is there, is there going to be the homeopathic association meeting every Sunday now? No. Just last Sunday and this Sunday? Mm, no, this, this was a, a not plan actually. Is it uh, the symptom? No, we were, you said to start at 200. So what's the homie, what is the medical association doing today that was a sudden activity? No, it was not sudden, but I came to know uh, all of a sudden. I was ignorance about the today's event. Okay, is there going to be a, an event next Sunday? No, I don't think so. Okay. Because it's good if we can plan ahead. This one was from a psychiatrist? Yeah, they had like some camp. What's a psychiatrist camp mean? I mean, some cases about uh, mental stress and uh, that sort of. Or some depression cases. So there were live patients there that came for free treatment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, but it was for psychiatrists and not for homeopaths? Yeah. No, no, not for homeopath. But did you attend any patients? No, I was just uh, attending. Watching you in? 
Yeah. So there was a psychiatrist that was seeing people who just came up like on a stage. And yeah, sort of. And what did he give them? For some people, the, he prescribed medicines or some people, he shift them to psychotherapy. Do you have a psychotherapist in your city? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's great. We have more than 300 practitioners of all together. No, no, all together. Allopaths, homeopaths, Ayurveds, 300 people. So this psychiatrist gave medication after one short meeting? Yeah. What medication was it? Allopath. I know, which medication? No, I didn't observe for each and every case. And if even if I observe, uh, I would not understand what was that. Because it's good if a homeopath knows what types of medications people take in order to be able to understand what their symptoms may be without the medication and also what the additional symptoms might be due to medication. Yeah. That's why I think it's very important for all homeopaths to be aware of the types of medications and their common side effects. So we can rule out the medicinal disease from the actual disease. Mm -hmm. We had this in the previous aphorism yesterday mm -hmm. about what to do when we have somebody who comes to us that's on medication. I think in some one or two cases, it was like Prozac type, Prozac something. I don't know what is it is. Okay, so I was just gonna review those aphorisms about what to do when a patient comes on medication. Because mm -hmm. that's important. Okay. And since you brought it up that you attended this function where a psychiatrist was giving out medication to people, mm -hmm. it's a uh, timely. So if somebody comes to us on psychiatric medication, an SSRI, for example, which is the class that Prozac belongs to, we need to know what the common symptoms are. Yeah. It's sort of uh, a depression sort of things. Yeah, SSRIs are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Yeah. And the really funny thing about it is, is that the science has just changed. Mm -hmm. And it came out in the news that these medicines don't actually do what they thought they did. And they're asking everybody to just go and see their psychiatrist and wait for further updates because the science has now shown, because remember that science is always changing, that SSRIs are not actually helpful in the way that they thought they were, which is extremely interesting. Because everybody's all trust the science, right? But then things <laughs> come out every few years. Wait, the science was wrong. Did you read any of these studies, Devira? Yes, I saw. I did. But I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm actually surprised they're admitting it. That, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're back now in the, you know, floating out new ideas about what causes depression. They don't really know. We're back in the 1960s, aren't we? <laughs> we sure are. Uh-huh. Back in the 1960s, trying to come up with ideas of how to help people. 
and it just turns out they've been numbing people's senses for the most part with fluoride products in a lot of cases. Right, Sanjay? That's the active ingredient in Prozac is fluoride. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It is. Whatever, right. whatever they are not admitting now, they might admit after 30 years. Right? Yeah, so we were just talking about what to do when the patient comes to us on medication. Because Sanjay went to a function of the medical society today where there was a psychiatrist that took patients on stage and gave Prozac to some and sent others for psychotherapy. But when we get somebody who's on a psychiatric drug, we don't take them right off of it. We have to include the symptoms that come along with the drug. And then which is usually start. which is usually more anxiety than they even had originally. Oh, getting people off that class of drugs is really hard. Yeah. Okay, so we were going to start with symptom number 200 here. Red swollen face with staring eyes. Swollen face. The face was red and swollen, but the rest of the body pale. Swelling of the cheeks with burning pain. Hard, large swelling on the face around the nose and eye with swelling of the parotid gland on the opposite side, lasting five days. Swelling of the left cheek about the nose and eye, which comes Are you going to read the footnotes? Yeah, I can read the footnotes, but I wasn't sure if any of those were applicable to what we just read. In the afternoon, yeah. increases the following day with heat and lasts five days. Another journal entry. Then we have swollen face. And swelling of the face, especially the lips. Another journal entry. And uninterrupted quivering and winking of both eyelids. Okay, so there's twitching of both eyelids and they're like opening and closing. Then an uninterrupted, okay, all day long and uninterrupted trembling and quivering of the right upper eyelid that at last becomes painful. So it starts out not painful. It goes on all day that the upper eyelid of the right side is just twitching, twitching, trembling, quivering. It means it's moving. And then it becomes painful. 210, expanded eyelids, eyes standing wide open wide open. Okay, so expanded eyelids, I guess that would mean that they're like wide like this, you know? All day long, okay, wait, throbbing pain in the lower eyelid towards the inner canthus with great inflammatory swelling at that point with much lacrimation for half an hour. Now, you remember what lacrimation means? Remember we had that word lacrimose? That has to do with tears. So there's a lot of tears. Lacrimose means tearful, like weepy. Okay, but getting back to this one, this piece of uh, proving data in 211, throbbing pain in the lower eyelid towards the inside with great inflammatory swelling at that point with much watering for half an hour. Inner, inner uh, canthi. Mm -hmm. Inflammation of inner canthi with 
extreme lacrimation like this it haven't mentioned left or right but both as it is mentioned earlier so i close and becomes watery heaviness in the eyes especially upper eyelid after waking in the morning eyes again close involuntarily she cannot keep themselves open until she gets up means after waking in the morning eyes close in voluntary what does mean without her control huh it means without her control it's in yeah in voluntary eyes close in voluntary means she tries to open after waking in the morning and it just like drooping of eyelids okay she is not able to open it she cannot keep them open until she gets up means she has to get jump out of the bed is that what it means tigwa Well, you we might assume so. After waking in the morning, the eyes close again out of her control. She cannot keep them open until she gets up. And getting up means getting out of bed. Getting out of bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aging stitches in the inner canthi. Inner canthi we already mentioned there is a inflammation at the inner canthi with swelling. and with extreme lacrimation for a half an hour same there is itching stitches in the inner canthi which only leaves off for short time on rubbing rubbing amulets but only for a short time yeah inner canthi of left eye now here they have mentioned inner canthi of the left eye is very painful even when slightly touch smarting in both eyes involuntary lacrimation salt water salt water run constantly out of eyes 220 lacrimation of eyes Twenty one dryness of eyes, of nose, mouth, and pharynx dryness all over eyes, nose, and mouth and throat pharynx. This is general journal entry. Burning dry. feeling in both eyes alternately worse in one or other pain is i am audible yeah yeah pain and burning in eyes again journal entry increase heat and hot feeling in the eyes what is different between these two symptoms pain and burning in eyes and increase heat and hot feeling in the eyes tikwa well one is a burning sensation and the other one is a feeling of heat and what is the difference between heat and burning when it is related to eye oh burning is 
that it's uncomfortable. If somebody says their eyes burn, it doesn't mean to me that they feel hot. It means more like they're inflamed and that they hurt. That's what it means to me when somebody tells me that they have a burning sensation in their eyes. Doesn't necessarily mean their eyes feel hot. Hot okay. is like radiates heat. Do they feel warm? Feeling warm, the eyes feeling warm to oneself is different than them having a burning feeling. Because a burning feeling is more of a feeling of, of pain. But eyes can be hot without being painful. Yeah. I would think that, you know, a feeling of heat. In burning, the eyes, burning is pain and uh, hot and heat feeling is sensation. Is that right? Yeah. It's less common for somebody to have a sensation that their eyes are hot than their eyes burn. Burning in the eyes is more common than my eyes feel hot. Yeah. Okay, 225. Feeling of heat in the eyes. It is as if they were enveloped in the hot vapors. Photophobia, he avoids looking Wait, what's at a light. Vapor? What's a vapor? Steam. Yeah, steam. Imagine being over the tea kettle, right? Mm -hmm. Photophobia, he avoids looking at light. Burning of eyes accompanied by painful itching. But both cheeses. Then eyes are pressed for upwards. Press upwards means? Press How upwards means you're taking your eyes and you're pressing them like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. I'm pressing my eyes upwards. And when I press upwards, I feel like vertigo. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, sort of. Huh, that's interesting. It's just like blackout. Okay. Burning in eyes accompanied with painful itching, but both cheeses when both eyes press upwards. In the morning, white, white of eye is red strict. With aching pain, white of eye is clara has become red with aching pain. Inflammation of eyes, injection of veins, injection of veins of white of eye with tickling sensation. Okay. Inflammation of eyes, the conjunctiva is transversed by red blood vessels with shooting pain. The eyes water. This is symptom. Yeah, there's red eyes in uh, Belladonna for sure. Yeah. Shooting in the eyes towards interior, shooting in the eyes towards interior. It's like, like this. And uh, yellowness of white of, white of eye. Yellowness, what is yellowness? What is redness? Redness is from inflammatory process. And why there is yellowness? When, when eyes are yellow, Sandhya. In the jaundice. And what or is jaundice? Anemia or anemia? 
not in anime actually. A bit of jaundice, maybe. What is jaundice? Yellow coloration in the eye due to jaundice means inflammation of the liver and due to the death, serum glorubin increase and the dispigmentation is the on the eye. Okay, okay. Inflammation of liver means hepatitis. Yeah. Hepatitis. So we have hepatitis in uh, belladonna. Or is there any other reason for illness in eyes, white of eye? What do you think, Tikwa? No, let's look and see what the rest of the proving data shows us. It's just showing there is yellowness in the eye. And what is the reason of yellowness? That is, that, that is the question. So that inflammatory condition, even of the organ, we see in Belladon. Provided that it's acute violent clinical condition. So along with that, if in, even in hepatitis, in the acute phase, we can think of. In the morning, the eyes are quite sealed up with matter. In conjunctivitis, we can see eyes are stuck in the morning. Swelling and prolonged inflammation of left punctum. What is the word? How punctum. to pronounce punctum? Yeah, it's punctum. those holes where the tears come out. You know the holes, the drainage holes for the tears? Mm -hmm. You know the little holes here? Yeah. Yeah, that. Male at first with the burning pain and afterwards with the aching pain. Three days. Oh, can you read? Because I am Losing the lines behind the pictures. Are we on 235? Yeah. A general aching in both eyes, as if hard spring water had got into the eyes. Okay, that would mean that there's particles in the water, and it's as though, so there's pain as if, there was a lot of minerals in the water and the water got into the eyes. When she closes the eyes, an aching pain deep in the eyeball. So it hurts way back in the eyeball. A cloudy aching comes in the right orbit and goes from that alternately into the forehead and back again. So we got aching and then it goes to, okay, the right orbit, that means the, the casing of the eye. And then it goes to the forehead and then back to the casing near the eye again. And then we have aching and watering of the eyes, especially in the morning. Creeping, aching pain in the eyes as if they were full of sand. She must rub them. Aching in the eyes as if sand had gotten to them. Aching in the eyes as from a grain of sand. Pain in the orbits, sometimes as if the eyes were torn out. One minute. This is before mascara was invented. <laughs> we could have all kinds of symptoms. 
Feels like I got mascara in my eye. <laughs> some of us. Does do mascara like gives that symptom? Yeah, some I kind of feels bad, like sand and different stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Then there's creeping, aching in the eyes as if they were full of sand. She must rub them. Aching of the eyes as if she had sand in them. Aching of the eyes as from a grain of sand. Lots of times when people have conjunctivitis, they're saying it feels like they have sand in their eyes. That's pretty common when people say that. Pain in the orbits. Remember, the orbits are the surrounding tissue, the muscles, and all that. Sometimes it is as if the eyes were torn out. Sometimes, and this more persistently, as though they were pressed into the forehead to which a pain is super added that presses from the forehead upon the eye. Now that's a little complicated <sighs> there. Okay, so we have pain in the orbits as if the eyes were torn out. And sometimes, and this is more persistent, more common, as though they were pressed into the head to which a pain is super added that presses from the forehead upon the eyes. So there's like a pressure down and a pressure back. Down and back, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have a tearing in the eyes proceeding from the inner canthi. So it's like a tearing pain coming from here into the eye. Drawing pain under the left eye upwards. So we have again that upward motion. And that one's like a drawing. Remember, drawing is kind of like a pulling pain. Pulling. 245. Drawing, drawing means like we're drawing. Like pulling. Hmm. Pulling towards. Right? Yeah, pulling towards, pulling away, pulling apart. Okay. 245, contracted pupils, difficult to dilate. You are gonna see a lot of dilated pupils here. But atropine. Mm-hmm, yes, because that is in here. Atropine effect. Yep. And that's where the whole name for this medicine comes from. Greek women ingesting the berries to enhance their beauty and making their pupils dilated. So we have contracted pupils 10 minutes, contracted pupils one and a half hours, contracted pupils two and a half hours. Then we have the dilation of pupils commenced after half an hour and then increased gradually. Dilated pupils after three and a half hours. The pupils are very dilated in the evening, even when the light is held close to the eye. So that is saying that the body, the, um, the eyes are not responsing, responsive to light properly as you'd expect. So if you shine a light on somebody's eye, the pupils are supposed to get very small, right? The pupils are supposed to contract, let in less light. But they're saying that they remain open even when light is shined. Yeah, mind people will show light desire. What kind of people show that? Those who practice mind. Oh, mind. I thought we were talking about something indifferent. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind that mind. Okay. Light, light desire is very specific symptom of <laughs> this remedy. They will <laughs> say there is desire of life because when pupil is dilated, it actually wants more lights to come inside. 
But don't they use that metaphorically that they want information? Yeah, but what can you do when people uh, mold these rubrics according to their mindset? The basic concept is to understand that atropine has very strong effect on pupil, which is which dilates the pupil. And in uh, during initial phase, it is contracted, but uh, later on, it keep on dilating for hours. We see bold after 14 hours and 15 hours. People are more dilated from third day onwards. This is also dilated immovable people means it's like uh, unconscious state, comatose state. Means your eyes is not communicating any information into the brain. Dilated immobile, immobile people, what does it mean? It means when you hold the torch to somebody's eye that it's not going to expand and contract like you expect it to. It's immobile. It's not moving. Yeah. Okay. Extreme dilated people. Means this remedy has very strong effect very strong effect on the dilatation of pupils. A small white posture in the left, extreme dilated pupil. Huh. Have you seen this small white posture in the left, extremely dilated pupil? Hmm? No, I've never seen anybody have a pustule in their dilated pupil. Have mm -hmm. you? No, but I have seen prolapse iris. Do you know prolapse iris? Never seen it. It's really, really very rare condition and uh, at least homeopaths should know how the condition should be or it is. Has anybody seen prolapse iris? No, sir. Devera? Hello? Yeah, I don't think anybody's seen it, Sanjay. Okay, you want to see? There is one more picture. I will try to share this. Look. What is the difference you can see? Mm, look at that. Look at this. Mm -hmm. It's not round. It pro uh, touches the bottom edge on the mm -hmm. one side. Yeah. Mm. 
This is prolapse iris. And this is in belladonna. This is in belladonna. Yeah. Okay. Small. Uh, okay. Yes, thank you. Sometimes complete loss of, sometimes merely diminish vision with enormously dilated and quite immobile pupil. See, lot of symptoms having this dilation of pupil. It's typical atropin effect. Complete dilatation of pupil of right eye with, sorry, and blindness for three weeks. This is journal entry, I think. Yeah, it is general. I have journal. to remember that sometimes, you know, there's, sometimes people get dilated pupils for various reasons. It's not, you know, it's very common in fever. And sometimes it's, you see it in anxiety. And sometimes you see it when people are emotionally distressed. Yeah. You could have you could have talked with that psychiatrist today about how often he's noticing the pupils of his patients. Can you read from uh, 260? Complete dilation of the pupil of the right eye and blindness for 3 weeks. And that is from a journal entry from the juice of the plant injected into the eye. So somebody got the plant in their eye and this is what happened. Then there's obscuration of vision from dilated pupils. And then there's obscuration of vision with extremely dilated pupils. Okay, so we have two situations here where people's vision is not clear because of their dilated pupils. Mm -hmm. And then we have three cases of jaundice treated by Belladonna in the footnote. Did we see yeah, that? Yeah, that's why. That's why. That's why I ask that uh, we have hepatitis case. Mm -hmm. People don't think of belladonna in jaundice. Usually. No, they think of those quote unquote liver remedies. Yeah. Like cardismar and chelidonium, things like that. But no, they're directly saying here the treatment of jaundice with belladonna. Blindness, the pupil of the right eye, extremely dilated and incapable of contracting. That means that it's really, really open and they can't, it won't close. You go out in the bright light, it doesn't get smaller. Put a torch in front of it, it doesn't get smaller. 265, oh, then great dimness of the vision. Dimness is the difficulty seeing of uh, various forms. And then 265, before the eyes, as if dim, dark, and black. So there's really bad difficulty seeing there. And then we have full-on blindness. And then amanorosis for three days, he cannot read print. He awakes blind. His eyes are blind and stand open. 270, extreme weakness of sight. Transient blindness with headache. Dimness of vision alternating with convulsions in the hands and feet. Dim, dullness of head and weariness of limbs. Dimness of vision, dryness of mouth, and pain in the belly. Also a journal entry. Dullness of the sight for three hours. Mm 
वन मिनट along with dullness of sight trembling in all the limbs long sightedness as in old age he only sees distinctly distant objects and perfectly parallel rays for example a star in the sky from belladonna juice injected in the eye a lot of journal entry here long sightedness as in old eye, old age you can only read large print mist before the eyes blindness as if mist were before the eyes obscuration on reading he cannot perceive anything in the book except the white border which surrounds black letters transformed into rings Mm, that's interesting. You know, when people have, um, oh, what's that thing that um, starts with an M? I can't think of the disease name. That's where people only have peripheral vision, where there's a problem with the macular generation. When people have that, they only have peripheral vision. Macula? Yeah, degeneration. That's when people lots of times they only have peripheral vision. And here it's saying here that he can't see anything in the book except for the white border. You know, we've got a book, right? And the white border with the text in the middle. You can only see the border. Okay. Feeling as he could see nothing, and yet he saw when he tried to see anything and strained the eyes to do so. The letters tremble and quiver of a golden and blue color when reading. Before the eyes, a large light colored ring around the candle, particularly of a red color. Sometimes the flame seems to be quite dissipated in rays. Before the eyes, she sees flames when she lays her hand on the swollen cheek and the air appears to be misty. She sees on the ceiling of the room a white star as large as a plate and light silver clouds pass over it from left to right several times and in various places. Large bright sparks from the eyes. He sees sparks before the eyes. On moving the eyelids, he sees sparks as from electricity. He sees double. He sees nothing at all near and everything double at a distance. He sees objects multiplied and dark. He sees objects inverted, feeling in the eyes as if they stood further out. Projecting eyes with dilated pupils, staring eyes, bold look. The eyes are projecting and sparkling, glittering glassy eyes. Eyes are very animated with fully dilated pupils. The eyes are red, glittering, glassy, and roll about in the head. <coughs> the eyeballs roll about in a circle spasmodically. The eyes are distorted. Spasms of the eyes distorting them. Eyes and hands are in constant spasmodic movement unsteadiness of head and hands. The eyes are distorted with redness and swelling of face. Squeezing pressure on the left zig zigoma. A tearing and drawing under the right zigoma. Pressure under the right zigoma. When chewing in the right maxillary joint, 
a, a violent shooting extending into the ear, which continues after chewing, but more is a twitching. Fine stitches in the cavity of the maxillary joint. Stitches in the upper jaw into the inner ear. So we're having pain from jaw to ear. Stitches in the parotid gland, violent stitches in the right parotid gland, standing to the arm cell when it terminates in a crampy pain. Next day, the same at about the same hour. Tearing pain on the posterior side of the cartilage of the left ear. Tearing pressure on the lower half of the cartilage of the right ear. Tearing in the right R sail with extending backwards. Tearing downwards in the inner and outer ear. A tearing pain in the right R sail ran downwards in the whole side of the face. Stitches in the external meatus auditorius. Pinching in the ears, first in the right and then in the left, immediately after a hiccup. Mm -hmm. A disagreeable aching in the meatus auditorius as if a finger were bored in. Feeling of exter in the external meatus auditorius as if someone pressed upon it. A very disagreeable feeling in the right ear as if it were forcibly torn out of the head. Alternating, alternating, alternately, alternately, out tearing and in pressing, pain in the ears and temples, alternating with a similar pain in the orbits. So there's a feeling of pressure in and out, in and out. And that alternates with pain in the ear, with pain in the eye, in and out, in and out. Earache in the left ear, sharp blows in the inner ear with squeezing like earache. Near the right ear, boring pain. Aching, tearing behind the right ear. Behind the left ear to the neck, the muscles are painful as if they were strongly pressed, save in the frontal muscles. A flying stitch darts from ear to the chin. Stitches in the inner ear with impaired hearing in it. Stitches in the inner ear during irritation from the stomach with the taste of food. So there's burping with pain in the ears. Drawing pain from the ears to the knee. Violent pressure on the mastoid process below the ear. Cutting blows through the mastoid process inwards. Perilent discharge in the ears for 20 days. Increased sensitiveness of the auditory organ. We can see how we might be giving this medicine with otitis media, right guys? Mm -hmm. First, the noise like trumpets and drums in the ears and like roaring immediately. Afterwards, humming and buzzing. Worse while sitting, better when standing and lying, still better when walking. So there's a lot of noise in the air, which is better with sitting. No, worse when sitting, better when standing and laying down, but even better when walking. Okay, the noises in the air, rushing noise in the air, vertigo with the belly bellyache. We already had that one, didn't we? Wind rushes out of the ears. In the morning, immediately after waking, a fluttering and bubbling before the ears. Deafness as if a skin were stretched before the ears. Difficulty of hearing. On the root of the nose, a couple of small red lumps, painting like fester, but only when touched. Dimples break out on the cheeks and nose, rapidly fill with pus and become covered with a scab. 
very cold nose. Smell before the nose like rotten wet eggs for a quarter of an hour. Aching pain in the nasal bones. In the nose above the alley, pain as if bruised on touching it externally. Too sensitive a smell. The odor of tobacco smoke and soot is intolerable to him. Nose bleeding immediately. Nose bleeding at night. Nose bleeding in the morning. Painful drawing over the left half of the nose. Creeping in the point of the nose that goes off and rubbing. Goes off means it goes away. It goes away with. Fine stitches in the point of the nose from the evening onwards through the night. Sudden rawness of the point of the nose with burning sensation. A very painful left nostril that is plugged up with matter in the morning. Under the nose, fine stitches. Great swelling of the upper lip with a stiff on opening the mouth. Painful ulcerous state of the nostrils at the side where they unite with the upper lip. The nostrils and the angles of the lips are ulcerated, but neither itch nor are painful. Mm -hmm. Drawing in the upper lip, followed by red swelling. Abscesses of the upper lip, causing painful swelling with fever, headache, loss of appetite, ending in free discharge of pus. A white-headed pimple under the left alanese without pain, ulcerated angle of the mouth where exactly the two lips unite with uncommon tearing pains round, even with at rest and per se. Sore feeling in the corners of the mouth as if they would become ulcerated. Small pimples, one after the other. No, small pimples, one on the upper lip near the right. Alanese covered with a scab, another under the border of the lower lip and on the inner skin of the lower lip with a smarting pain as from salt water. Small, pale red pimples at the corners of the mouth without sensation. They soon go off, they soon go away without superating. On the left upper lip, a pimple with creeping sensation when let alone, but itching and shooting when touched. Oh. We have a lot of different kinds of pimply eruptions on the face, on the nose, with or without pus, with or without pain. In the corner of the lips, an ulcer with red border and eroding itching. On the lower external lip edge, burning pain and small vesicles. The lips, especially the upper lip, Crack in the middle on sneezing and coughing. A pimple on the border of the lip, equidistant from the middle and the corner, which becomes transformed into an ulcer covered by a scab and pains like an inflamed heart. Spasmodic movements of the lips, the right corner of the mouth drawn upwards. A spasm draws the mouth awry. What mouth is the uh, Ari? What is that word? It means to the side. Okay. Mouth drawn awry by spasms. Bloody foam before the mouth. Bloody foam before the mouth, shaking the head and grinding of the teeth from early morning till noon. Dimples betwixt the lips and chin, filled with pus, with burning, smarting pain, especially painful at night. 
a pimple with smarting, eroding pain externally, low into the side of the lip. Mm -hmm. A pimple on the side of the chin with itching, shooting, but more shooting than itching. This sensation is removed by scratching. Several small pimples on the chin. A number of small miliary pimples on the papules on the chin with burning pain on touching them. Sharp stitches of the chin. A nestling spasm-like feeling in the chin. Then we have tristis, impossibility of opening the jaws on account of painful stiffness of the chewing muscles. Closure of the jaws, Christmas. She clenched her teeth together so that they could not be separated, though great force was employed with twitchings in all the limbs and chilliness. She bit her teeth so tightly together that a tooth had to be broken out in order to induce fluids. Ooh, that's aggressive, huh? They didn't mm -hmm. have to relax any of those muscles, did they? Stitches and tension of the lower jaw toward the ear. She feels as if the lower jaw would jaw backwards. Pushing it forwards causes great pain. Biting causes terrible, horrible pains. You know, in, we saw earlier in Belladonna that it is prophylactic to hydrophobia, also known as, what's that disease called? Hydrophobia. Yeah, what's the real name? Rabies. Rabies. Yeah. Yeah, Hahnemann says that when people get bitten by dogs that might, that might be sick, give Bella a dog. Mm -hmm. On the lower Log. border, huh? Log job. Yes. Yeah, that, that's what we're reading all about here is that there's Christmas and that the jaws won't open. They're absolutely stuck. The lower border of the right lower jaw, sharp stitches. That's like a stabbing pain. And there's throbbing in the lower border of the, of the lower jaw. In the lower jaw in the glands, a jerking groin pain that darted in rapidly and quickly, and then quickly stopped. Okay, we will stop here. Yes. 400. Okay, so can you sum up what we've read about tonight? Huh? Can you make a summary of what we read about tonight? 200 symptoms. Mm -hmm. We have completed 200 symptoms. Yeah, I was wondering if you could summarize what these symptoms were about. Oh. Too many symptoms, actually. <laughs> there were a lot of eye symptoms and a lot of... A lot of and a lot of things with the, um, the pupils. Eye, pupils... Then nose, ear pains of various ear types. pain, and then a lot of different like pimples and pustules and things like that on the face. And then we get mm. into the jaw being immobile. Log jaw. Mm -hmm. You yep. see in uh, titanus also. Very good. Okay. So we're ending here tonight? Yeah.
Okay. Sandhya? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Are you, are you sleeping? No, no, sir. I'm listening. What I'm lying down. Yeah, your picture shows that you are listening. Yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling well. That's why I'm like. Yeah, I'm surprised you attended. If you don't feel well, you don't have to attend. Yeah, well, okay. soon. Uh, turn off the recording. Should I turn off the recording now, Sandy? Yeah, you can see. We will continue on next uh, Sunday. Well, next Sunday, okay. barring any impediments in our activities, we will be here reading more exciting information from the proving data of belladonna which is a very very big remedy and remember bodyhausen wanted that included in the antisporics which is interesting we see a lot of things here that are indicative of spora in the proving data yeah therefore we can see how bodyhausen wanted it there and it's definitely a polycrest. Mm -hmm. Hey, so join us next time with our fun and exciting continuation of the proving data. And namaste. Namaste.